So I've poured a drink, and actually, on opening the bottle and pouring, some aromas were released. But we'll get to that in a second. First, let's look at the exterior here. First thing we're going to look at is clarity. As in, how clear is the liquid that we're looking at? On this level, level 2, we have two answers only. It's either clear or it's hazy. So you can pierce right through it, or there's some cloudiness to it. Sometimes you can't really judge by looking at it from the side. What you can then do is look at it through the bottom and put your finger beneath the surface. There. Well, you can clearly see my finger through there. So we can conclude that the liquid has a clear appearance. Looking at the intensity, as in how intense is, say, the overall color that is reflected to you. Starts with water white, which is easily compared to this glass of water right here. Or is it more pale, which I happen to actually have a bottle of oil here. As you can see, water white, not that intense at all. Here you have some color in the oil. That would be pale. Next would be medium, which is actually what my first estimation of this liquid would be medium in, in intensity then we get deep and then we get opaque opaque would be like baileys it's so thick in color that you can't see anything through it the color itself is blocking anything deep would be well a bit more dark than this say a very dark rum would definitely be deep this would be a fair a good medium on a scale of intensity so on this level of WSD2, we're looking from colorless, which would be water, to lemon, to gold, amber, brown, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and so on. On the higher levels of WSD2, if I understood correctly, you get uh, an actual uh, grade of color scales within each color range. So you can say, okay, it's orange, but what kind of orange is it? Not yet on this level. On this level, it's either orange or it's not. So let's judge this. We're actually judging a book by its color here. I'd definitely say amber to brown. Other observations, louching. That is the effect that you get when you drop water in a drink that has some anise in it. Then you get a cloudy effect. And since this is a herbal liqueur, that might actually be an interesting thing to do. There we go. Swirl it around. Looking at my finger again to test for the clarity, I can't really see any louching. Louching would really be like a cloud of smoke rising within your drink, which is not the case here at all. The first thing we're going to do is taste whether it's or smell whether it smells clean or unclean this is actually more of a safety check i mean some drinks like vermouth or something with dairy in it like bailey's can actually spoil definitely clean then the intensity how intense is it what you smell is it neutral doesn't it face you at all is it light is it medium or is it pronounced? Are you kind of blown away by it? And again, I'm not really popping my nose into the thing. It's holding some distance. Let's reset. I'm going just to get a quick whiff. Other side as well, because your two nostrils have different perceptions. I would say light, actually. It's very subtle. There are definitely different aromas to discern there. But I'm not blown away, nor is it very aggressive alcohol-wise. Sometimes you get that very sharp stinging in your nose, especially with higher ABV drinks. And you're like, whew, man, that's going to punch me in the mouth. Not with this one. I would actually have written aromatic characteristics. So do you smell any raw material? Is there any trace of the processing that you might smell? Any oak in there for maturation, etc., etc. There's some floral notes in there. 
some honey. I get some violets there. I'm getting some sharper, sharper notes. Something that would sting if you put it in your nose. That's an analogy you could, uh, you could have there. Say that could be either bitter or sharp, like citrusy. Imagine uh, just putting a slice of citrus in your nose. How that would sting. Of course, this isn't that sharp. But just to give you an idea how something as abstract as sharp could translate to smelling or to flavor. Nectar. This is very subjective, but it actually smells very thick, as if it has a lot of sugar in there. Definitely getting some actual citrus now. It's still hard to discern the specific herbs that should be in there. It is a herbal liqueur, this Amaro Montenegro. It's almost as if I smell some, some juniper in there, some pine-like quality. That's as much as I can tell right now, right off the bat. You don't have to be uh, embarrassed or ashamed if you don't smell everything and, every, and uh, anything that's in there, especially on the first try. It's uh, also subjective depending on how you feel that day, other circumstances, what you've eaten before, plus what your vocabulary is. If you've smelled only, well, we've all smelled a limited amount of things during our lifetime. So if you've never learned the word, the smell for a certain thing, you won't be able to recognize it or name it. So good practice is to just actively start smelling things like these flowers outside. Same if you walk through the city, start smelling things, start being more conscious of what you eat and what is near you. And you'll be much more able to describe a wine or a spirit in this case. First thing on the list, the sweetness. So on this scale, sweetness may be dry, off dry, medium or sweet. It's not as sweet, as sugary thick as I had expected based on the aromas. Medium, max. Texture wise, it is a bit thick, velvety, not rough at all. Smooth, but more on the velvety side of things. Not that mouth warming, mouth filling, definitely. Flavor intensity, a medium. So I've just swallowed the uh, gulp of bitter that I had. And that's actually not the next step you're supposed to take. But I noticed that once I've tasted the sweetness, texture, and flavor intensity, uh, my mouth gets so watery and kind of get overstimulated that it's hard to start discerning from that point onward any specific aromas. So I prefer to skip one step on the first sip and then judge the length after swallowing the finish. So how long will you actually perceive your drink as being there after it was gone? In this case, it was say, a good medium maybe even long, it's, it's still there. And what actually is there is a bit different than what I tasted before. It started with say the sugariness, uh, then the aromas got more attention. And in the end, some of the more bitter qualities, they, uh, they became more clear. So that leads us to the second point of the finish, the nature of the finish. Is it neutral? Like, does the flavor remain the same after having swallowed your drink? Um, is there like a simple transition there? Does the base flavor change into another flavor? Is there some complexity? Maybe it goes from one flavor to the next, to a third? Or is it very complex? With very complex, I can imagine it going from one flavor to the other and to the next, and then going back again to an earlier flavor. That would be very complex flavor development. In this case, it's, um, let's say it has some complexity to it. Getting those violets again. Very nice. I get some mintiness as well. Not as strong as with Frene Branca, but it does remind me of it. A tiny bit of Sultana raisin, a bit of lemongrass. Definitely a strong, strong sense of pine again. Yeah, I remember now why I prefer this over Frene Branca. Definitely uh, less aggressive, 
a little less dry. And that is sharp on the minty freshness. You're often not really conscious of what you taste, but this list with examples sets a good standard. It's a good point of reference to remind you of what flavors actually exist. Conclusions. This level, WSET level two, the only conclusions we're kind of pulling here is the quality. Would I say, based on what I've just experienced, that this uh, spirit is faulty? It's defect. Does it have low quality? Is it acceptable? Is it good? Is it very good or is it outstanding? So, of course, it's always hard to put away any subjective factors that might come into play, like the company you're in or the occasion. Was I tasting this just after, say, my brother had a wedding? Or was I drinking this because uh, someone had broken up with me? Or maybe uh, my dog had died and this was the only drink that was available? All these things uh, can really determine your subjective opinion on this. All things aside that may be subjective, based on what I tasted, would I say it is faulty, is it poor or acceptable? I would say that it's a good, very good liqueur. It gives uh, a nose with multiple aromas, a surprising mouthfeel, but not in a negative way. And there was some flavor development and the after is there. The after is long and it has development and it is not, let's say, too aggressive, not to say disgusting. It's, it's an after that, yeah, you can really appreciate. I can still sit here and think, oh man, yeah, that was tasty. So good, very good, if not outstanding. I mean, that there still is kind of a subjective factor here, but definitely a good herbal liqueur. This uh, Amaro Montenegro. So that concludes my video on WSET two level spirits tasting with an example of how I use it in my daily life. I'll be doing some more tastings in the future, having kicked off with Montenegro today, because I have quite the home bar. So even with Corona forcing bars to be closed here in the Netherlands, I still have a selection to go through and share my tasting notes with you. I hope to have given uh, some information for to you sufficient information on what WSET is like and how it may be useful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment section or PM me. I hope to see you on the next video. Good bartending to you.